everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Hello, Frito. Oh, I thought you were asleep. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Frito. It's lovely to be in the library, isn't it? I love libraries. Do you know why? Because they're full of books. And you know what books are full of? They can be full of pictures. Can they be full of anything else? No. Words, that's right. Sometimes they're full of funny bits. Sometimes they're full of naughty bits. Sometimes they're full of interesting bits. I wonder, did you see Danny Brown when you were coming into the library? Do you know Danny Brown? Oh, Danny is a rascal. Danny is a very, 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 very naughty little boy. If you see him, he might be buying ice cream maybe. If you see him, will you tell me? I brought along a picture so you'll know what he looks like. Are you ready? Here he is. Have you seen him? No. Keep an eye out because I think he might be in Sligo. He follows me. I came all the way from Dublin and he follows me sometimes. He doesn't like it when I come to libraries and talk to kids. Do you know why? Because I tell everybody what he's been doing. He calls me Big Mouth. Isn't that very rude? It is very rude. You don't call people big mouth. But he doesn't like it that I tell everybody the naughty things he's done. I write them in books. Now, I'm sure some of you have done naughty things in your life, but I bet nobody has done this much naughty things. Imagine if your mom or your dad wrote down, or your teacher, wrote down every naughty thing you did. Would it fill a book? I don't think so. Is there anybody here who's naughty? No, 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 no. Well, Danny is. This one I wrote about Danny is because Granny came to babysit. Poor, poor Granny. She had such a terrible time that evening. The book is called Granny Makes a Mess, but it wasn't Granny who made the mess. Guess who made the mess? Danny. Danny. Now, Danny has a little sister. Oh, she's lovely. She's only that size. And when she stands up, she's that size. And her name is Susie. She's such a little pet. And Susie was one. And her granny gave her a little doll called Baby Do It All. Well, somebody got their hands on Baby Do It All and did some terrible things. Guess who? Danny. Danny. This one is called Danny's Sick Trick. He's always trying to fool his mom and dad or his granny. This one is called Granny's Teeth. Does anybody here know somebody old? Very, 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 very old. Even older than me, who has no teeth. Do you know anyone with no teeth? No. Sometimes people have no teeth and they get false teeth and they put them in and that's what granny did and danny got his hands on the teeth what do you think he did with them would you be shocked if i told you he brought them to school this one is called danny brown and his daft dog and danny loves his dog his dog is called Tino. This one is called Danny's Granny's Big Surprise. 
these two have color pictures in them, so maybe we'll choose one of these to read. Would you like to hear one of the stories about Naughty Danny? Oh, good. I love people who like stories. I hope he's not around, because he'll get really, really cross when he knows I've told you all about his naughty things. <laughs> Granny spoke to Danny on the phone. You're all coming to my house, she said, for the whole weekend. You, and Mum, and Dad, and Susie. Great, said Danny. And then Danny looked at his dog, Kino. Can I bring Kino instead of Susie, he said. Granny laughed. <laughs> oh, Danny, she said, don't be mean. Kino can come too. And, said Granny then, I have a big secret to show you. Oh, I love secrets. Do you like secrets? Yeah. And when they got to Granny's house, Danny was very excited. Show me your secret, Granny, he said. I love secrets. Granny took Danny upstairs. She went into the spare room. You'll sleep in here, Danny, she said. And this is where I have my secret. You must look after it for me. Granny opened the wardrobe door. On a shelf was a big birthday cake. It had fluffy white icing all over the top. Ooh. And there were decorations all around the edges. And there were four pink candles on the top. Hmm. Danny was puzzled. But Granny, he said, who's going to be four? Not me, not Susie, not Kino. Granny smiled. It's for your mum. Tomorrow is her birthday, but you mustn't see the cake. It's my surprise. But mum's not four, said Danny. And Granny just smiled. You keep my secret, Danny, she said. I'll keep your secret, Granny, said Danny. I won't tell mom. Granny gave Danny a hug. <laughs> Danny hates her hugs. <laughs> and you'll keep Kino out of this room, won't you, dear? She said, he can sleep outside. Danny was stunned. Keep Kino out of my room, he thought. No way. Can you say no way like Danny? One, two, three. No way. Oh, he said it louder than that. One, two, three. No way. But he smiled at Granny. Hmm. Your secret is safe, Granny, he said sweetly. Mm-hmm. When Granny left, Danny thumped the bed. No, 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 he said. Kino always sleeps in my room, he said. Granny can't put him outside. Then Danny had a great idea. I could find a hiding place here for Kino. So he looked around the room. First, Danny looked under the bed. He tried to crawl in, but there wasn't much room. 
Then he tried the big wooden blanket box. But it was a bit stuffy. There was no air in there. Then he opened the wardrobe. There was plenty of room for a dog in there. There was even a nice smell. This is a great hiding place for Kino. I put Kino in here. And then Danny looked at Granny's secret and he was a little bit worried. Hmm. If Kino eats Granny's secret, I'll be in big trouble. I know what I'll do, said Danny suddenly. I'll find another hiding place for Granny's secret, and then Kino can hide in the wardrobe. Yes. So Danny lifted the cake. Will you help him? He lifted the cake out of the wardrobe. This is not very big, he said to himself. This cake will fit under the bed. Isn't that very clever? So Danny put the cake on the floor and he slid it under the bed. But the candles fell off. Ah, those candles were stupid anyway, said Danny. Mum's much older than four. Granny's so stupid. Suddenly, Mum came into the room. She was carrying her weekend bag. She walked over to the bed. She put the bag on the floor. At last, she said, I've finished unpacking. And then, Mum kicked the bag under the bed. And then she left the room. Danny was speechless. I wonder what he looked like, he was so shocked. Can you show me after three? One, two, three. Oh, you're so good. Oh no, said Danny, Mum has ruined Granny's secret. And he crawled under the bed and he pulled the bag out. And then he reached for Granny's secret and he dragged it out. There was an old shoe stuck in the lovely icing. Danny was very cross with Mum. It's her own fault if she doesn't get any surprise. He said, Mum should be more careful. And then Danny decided to find a better hiding place for Granny's secret. He lifted the lid of the big wooden blanket box. Are you ready? Perfect. Very carefully, Danny put Granny's secret in on top of the blanket and he closed the lid. Now, said Danny, Granny's secret is safe. And he raced downstairs to get Kino. Yippee, come on, Kino. Danny sneaked Kino up to the bedroom. Susie was sitting on the floor playing with her bricks. Out of my way, Susie, said Danny. I have to hide Kino. Danny pushed past his little sister. He opened the wardrobe door. He put Kino in. Time for bed, yelled Dad then. He came into the bedroom. He tripped on a brick, oof, and he hurt his foot. What a mess, Susie, said Dad. And he picked up Susie's bricks. Then he lifted the lid of the blanket box, and he threw the bricks in. And then he carried Susie downstairs. Danny was shocked. He lifted the lid quickly. Ah! He peeped inside. 
two of Susie's bricks were stuck in Mum's birthday cake. Danny lay back on the floor. Dad, he groaned crossly. You've ruined Granny's secret. Granny's secret isn't safe in this room, said Danny. I'll have to find somewhere else to hide it. Suddenly, he had a great idea. The shed, he said. I'll hide Granny's secret in the shed. Mum will never find it there. And later, when everyone sat down to watch television, Danny crept down the stairs with Granny's secret. He took it out to the shed. Danny put Granny's secret in the corner of the shed. Granny's secret is safe at last, he said. And Kino is safe too. And then he ran upstairs and he got into bed. Soon Granny came into the room with Susie and she put Susie in the cot. But a strange noise came from the wardrobe. Granny jumped. What was that? She said. What do you think it was? What do you think it was? Eh, 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 eh. It was Susie, said Danny. She burped. Granny laughed and he gave Danny, she gave Danny another good night kiss. He doesn't like Granny's kisses and she's always kissing him and hugging him. But as soon as Granny left the room, Danny jumped out of bed. He opened the wardrobe door. It's safe, Kino, he said. You can come out now. Kino happily, but Granny came back into the room. Out, she yelled, and she marched Kino down the stairs. Next day, everyone sang happy birthday to Mum. Will we sing happy birthday to Mum? Are you any good at singing happy birthday? One, two, three. Three. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear mom, happy birthday to you. Oh, happy birthday, said Granny, and she got her camera ready. Now you must blow out your candles. Mom looked puzzled. <laughs> I don't have any candles, she said. We don't even have a cake laughed Dad. And Granny winked at Danny. We have a secret, don't we, Danny? She said, let's go and get it. And Granny started to go upstairs. No, Granny, whispered Danny. Your secret wasn't safe there, so I put it in the shed. In the shed, cried Granny. But that's where I put Kino. <gasps> Granny ran out to the shed. Danny shut his eyes tightly. I hope Kino doesn't like icing, he thought. Soon Granny marched out of the shed again. <gasps> Her face was purple and she was dragging Kino with one hand. And she was holding Mum's birthday cake in the other hand. <gasps> Danny opened his eyes. Oh, no, he cried. Are you ready? One, two, three. Oh, no. Oh, louder than that. One, two, three. Oh, no. He looked at the cake. The candles were gone. There was an old shoe sitting on the top. Two of Susie's bricks were stuck in the icing. And Kino had eaten a big hole in the cake. 
Danny? Yelled Granny. You've ruined my secret. Danny ran. It's Mum's fault, he said. It's Dad's fault. It's Kino's fault, he squealed. He ran all around the garden. And Granny ran after him. And Mum. And Dad. And Kino. Danny said, I'll never do anything like that again. Never, never, never. Do we believe him? No, I don't. He's always doing naughty things. I bet he will. Do you know, before I came out this morning, I was looking for my car keys, and I couldn't find them. And I thought, I bet somebody doesn't want me to go to Sligo Library and tell all the children about you. I bet Danny has taken them. So I went upstairs, because sometimes he hides stuff under his bed. So I went upstairs to his room, and I pushed in the door. He was away at a football match. I pushed in the door, and there was his school bag over the floor, and his books thrown over the floor, and his copy books with big spills of milk on them, and then a banana sandwich. And I went over to the bed, and I put my hand in, and I pulled something out. What do you think it was? No, his pajamas. So I threw them away, and then I put in my hand again, and I pulled something out. What do you think it was? And his dirty football shorts that he never even told Mum needed to go in the wash. So I put my hand in again. And I felt something, and there was a little jingle. And I pulled it out. What do you think it was? His Superman underpants. <laughs> but there was a little jingle. So I shook them. I held my nose, and I shook them like that. And guess what fell out of them? The keys. But while I was there, I saw a few other things under the bed. Maybe you might be able to tell me what he's planning. Will you? You could be a Danny detective. I think he's up to something. I found this under his bed. What's that? Do you know what it is? It's a scrubbing brush for the toilet. But he's put two eyes on it. He told me he needed some really strong glue. And I said, what do you need it for, Danny? And he said, um, um, I, I have to do something for school. So I gave him really strong glue. I think he used it to stick these eyes on. Why is he putting eyes on the toilet brush? Does anybody have any ideas? What do you think? What's he up to? I think he's got some plan. What do you think? Has he got a plan? He's what? He wants company. Maybe he does. I think you're too kind to him, though. Because I know that the handle of this brush shines in the dark. Yeah, and the eyes shine in the dark. And when the handle and the eyes, who would he want to scare? Me? <laughs> you could be right. I think you could be right, because he doesn't like it. Anyone who comes in his room, who might crawl into his room? A thief? Yeah, but there's somebody in his house who's always crawling into his room, and he gets so, so cross with her. Who do you think it is? Susie. Would he scare Susie with this, do you think? Oh, really? What would Susie say if he scared her? She goes like this. And you can see all the way down into her tummy nearly. She opens her mouth so widely. Wait till I show you. In this story here, yes? Is 
sisi lain saya no no good and is he bold how do you know when he's bold oh dear well there's nobody like danny here i can see everybody here is very good look at susie when she gets cross she goes are you ready one two three Look at the size of her mouth. I wonder, could he scare Granny with this? Would he be trying to scare Granny? Would it be easy to scare Granny, I wonder? Pardon? Oh, I don't want to break it because Mum bought it for the bathroom for cleaning the toilet, but I don't know will she be able to use it now after Danny had it. We'd have to take the eyes off. He was going to put a nose there. I wonder what would he have used for his nose? Anyone got any ideas? What would you think? He could, maybe he wanted nice heartbeats for the nose. Very clever. Well, I think I'm going to tell mom about this. The other thing I found under his bed was this. Now you have to hold your noses. They're not Danny's. They're definitely not Danny's. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Do you know who they belong to? Because I remember mom knitting them for her. Granny's feet get very cold in bed. So mom made her lovely bed socks. But Granny didn't do that to them. I wonder how they got like that. Yeah. Does anybody have any idea? Yeah. Put your thumb up if you've got an idea. Yes, what do you think? Oh, would he really do that, do you think? I think he would. But why, ooh, why do they smell so badly? And why are they so dirty? Who was wearing them, I wonder? What do you think? What do you think? Do you know there was one story where he was very worried about Kino getting cold and he put Susie's gloves on Kino's front paws. I wonder did he put Granny's socks on Kino's back paws? Maybe he did. What do you think would happen when mom finds that this is what he did with her lovely bed socks for granny. Anybody have any idea? What do you think she should say to him? If you were mom, what would you say to Danny? Would you say, well done, Danny? You throw him out the window. Well, I don't think we'll do, oh. Where did that come from? Is this Kino's treat? Well, maybe I'll put that back in there and give that to Kino. Would you like to hear about what happened when Danny went to the wedding? Now, Danny wasn't getting married. Wait, and I will tell you what happened when he went to the wedding because I wrote it all down. I wrote it down in the book called Page Boy Danny. Did anybody ever hear this story? Yeah. You did. Do you like it? Would you like to hear it again? Were you going to say something? I did. I did. I tell tales. This one doesn't have color in the pictures. It's called Page Boy Danny. Danny Brown was playing with his dog Kino. He was teaching him how to do tricks. Sit, cried Danny, and Kino sat up straight. Can you sit up straight there, Kino? Very good. Look, Mum, cried Danny. Kino can do a trick. But Mum wasn't listening. She was feeding Danny's little sister, Susie. Danny took a sausage from Susie's dish, and he held it in front of Kino. Beg cried Danny. And Kino stood on his back paws and he held out his front paws. He 
Danny's a very clever dog, isn't he? Look, Granny, cried Danny then. Tino has learned another trick. But Granny wasn't listening. She was trying on her new hat. Danny pushed Tino down then. Play dead, he said. And Tino lay on his side and he put his head on the floor. Danny rubbed Tino's tummy. Roll over, he said. And Tino rolled over and he put his four paws in the air. Look, Grandpa, said Danny. Tino can do lots of tricks. Grandpa put down his newspaper. He looked at Tino. He saw Tino sit. He saw Tino beg. He saw Tino play dead. He saw Kino roll over. Hmm. Can Kino fetch? Said Grandpa. <gasps> Granny's new hat was on the table. Watch this, cried Danny. And he threw the hat in the air. Fetch Kino, he yelled. And Kino jumped. He caught the hat. Grandpa was amazed. Oh, Kino is a very clever dog, Danny, he said. Grandpa rubbed Kino's shiny coat, and then he had an idea. Kino looks great, he said, and he does what he's told. Let's take him to the dog show on Saturday. Cool, shouted Danny. And he put on Granny's hat and he danced for joy. We're going to the dog show, he sang. But just then Granny appeared. <gasps> my new hat, she cried. That's my new hat for Saturday. And she snatched her hat from Danny. Are you going to the dog show too, Granny? Said Danny. Mum laughed. <laughs> Don't be silly, Danny. Uncle Ted's wedding is on Saturday. We're all going. Oh, no, said Danny. I can't. I'm going to the dog show with Grandpa. You go to the wedding and I'll take Kino to the dog show. No, Danny, said Mum. You have to to go to the wedding. You're the page boy. What's a page boy? Said Danny crossly. Does anybody here know what a page boy is? You do. Well, you tell me what's a page boy? Is it somebody like this? Yes, you're right. Somebody who has a special job at the wedding. You'll be in charge of the wedding rings, said Mum. Danny wasn't happy. He folded his arms. Are you ready? One, two, three. I don't know how to be a page boy, he said. Don't worry, Mum, he said. I'll tell you what to do. And you get to wear special clothes. Oh, you look great. It sounds just like the dog show, <laughs> chuckled Grandpa. Suddenly Danny had a wonderful idea. He knelt beside Kino and he hugged him. Kino, you can do your tricks at the wedding. It'll be just like the dog show. On Saturday morning, the house was very noisy. Everyone was busy. Granny was running upstairs and downstairs. I can't find me hat, she said. I put it in the boot of the car, said Grandpa. It'll be safe there. Susie was screaming. Wah! She'd spilt her milk on her new dress. <gasps> oh no, Susie, cried Mum. Now I have to clean you up again. Kino has to be cleaned up for the wedding too, said Danny. Mum stared at him. Are you mad, she said. Kino is not going to 
The wedding? Danny was shocked. He looked at Pino's little sad face. Don't worry, Pino, he said. I have a plan. And then he sneaked upstairs with Pino. He took him into the bathroom. He scrubbed him clean. And then he got Pino's new red doggy coat. <coughs> barked Kino and he started to run downstairs. <laughs> but Danny ran after him. Kino, he said, today is an important day. You have to wear special clothes. And Kino put the doggy coat, oh sorry, Danny, put the doggy coat on Kino. Then he sneaked out of the car with Kino. He opened the boot. <coughs> Jump in, Kino, he said. And Danny closed the boot and he ran back to the house. Mum was upstairs. Danny, she yelled. It's time to get dressed for the wedding. Hurry. Mum gave Danny a white shirt. It had frills all down the front. Then she gave him a blue bow tie. Danny made a face. Yuck, he said. Are you ready? One, two, three. Oh, he said it louder than that. One, two, three. <laughs> then Mum gave Danny a pair of white stockings. These will look nice with the knickerbockers, she said. Knicker what? <laughs> Screamed Danny. Those clothes are stupid. I'm not wearing them. And Danny ran downstairs, but Mum ran after him. Danny, she said crossly, today is an important day. You have to wear special clothes. Danny hid in the garden. Mum looked everywhere. Danny, she yelled. Granny looked everywhere. Danny! She squealed. They couldn't find him. Grandpa saw Danny hiding in the shed. Danny, he said, I have a big surprise for you. But first you have to do your job at the wedding. Danny peeped out of the shed. What's the surprise? He said. I'm going to take you and Kino to the dog show. We'll go after the wedding. Yippee, cried Danny, and he hugged Grandpa, <coughs> and he raced upstairs, and he put on the frilly shirt, and he put on the bow tie, and he put on the silly stockings. He even put on the knickerbockers. <laughs> In the car, Mum gave Danny a little velvet box. The rings are in that, she said. Mind them carefully, and I'll tell you what to do when we get to the church. Soon they reached the church. There were ribbons and flowers everywhere. Oh, dear, said Granny. I forgot my hat. <laughs> I'll go to the car and get it, said Grandpa. And Grandpa got Granny's hat. But the ribbons were torn. The flowers were chewed. My hat is a mess, <laughs> said Granny. Kino was hiding in the boot, said Grandpa. And he's escaped. Oh, no, thought Danny. I think it's time. For me to hide. Mum nudged Danny. He slid under the seat. She nudged him again. Bring the rings up now, she said in a low voice. Danny took the two rings out of the box. He began to walk slowly up the church. 
everyone was quiet. Everyone was watching Daniel. Nobody saw what was coming in the back door of the church. came into the church. He saw Danny. He barked happily. Could you be Kino and bark three times? One, two, three. Oh, he was so excited. Kino jumped on Danny and one of the rings flew out of Danny's hand. Fetch, Kino! Fetch! cried Danny. And Kino soared into the air. He opened his mouth. He caught the ring. Danny clapped. Will you give him a clap too? Well done, Kino! He cheered. Danny looked at Grandpa. What did you think of that? He shouted. Grandpa's mouth was wide open. Danny looked around the church. Everyone's mouth was wide open. Show me. One, two, three. Ah, oh, they all want to fetch, said Danny. Let's show them some more tricks, Kino. And Danny held the other ring over Kino's head. Beg, Kino, he ordered. But Kino lay still. He didn't stand on his hind legs. He didn't lift his front paws. He just lay on the floor of the church. He didn't move. <laughs> Look, everyone, cried Danny. Kino can play dead. Roll over, Kino, said Danny then. Kino didn't move. Danny began to get worried. What's wrong, Kino? He whispered. Suddenly, Kino coughed. <coughs> he coughed and he coughed. <coughs> <coughs> oh no! Yeah, Danny. <gasps> it's the ring. <gasps> Kino has swallowed the ring. Mum, Granny, and Grandpa rushed out of their seats. Mum glared at Danny. Sit, she hissed. What about Kino? said Danny. Grandpa lifted Kino in his arms. We'll have to take him to the vet, he said. Danny was shocked. But what about the dog show? he said. Everyone must see Kino's tricks. We've seen enough of Kino's tricks, Danny, said Grandpa. And we've seen enough of your tricks too, Danny, said Granny. Mum was furious. Do you know what furious means? Cross. She means she was so cross you couldn't even see her lips. Can you look so cross that you can't even see your lips? And she said... The vet will deal with Kino, and I'll deal with you. Danny flopped to the floor, and he lay on his side, and he threw back his head, and he said, I think I'd better play dead. And then he said, I'll never do anything like that again. Never, never, never. Do we believe him? No, we don't. Of course, look at all the things he's done. This is Danny's pesky pet, Kino. I think that might have been the time he put the socks on him. And the, this one is Danny Smelly Toothbrush. Do you know that story? Yeah. Well, we don't have time for this story today, but in this story... Somebody gives Danny a new toothbrush because his old one is all bent and bristles are broken. And who do you think gives him a lovely new toothbrush? Granny does. Danny decides 
I don't need to brush my teeth. I lick them clean like this. I don't need to brush them. Now that's very silly, isn't it? Because everybody needs to brush their teeth. But he decided he was going to get rid of his toothbrush and he did some terrible things to it. I think you have been a wonderful, wonderful group. You have been so good. Will you give yourselves a massive clap? <laughs> and will we give the people in the library a big clap? Because they rang me and asked me where I come down and talk to you because they said all the children in Sligo love stories. Will you give them a big, big clap? Thank you very much. Does anybody have a question for me? What's your question? Where's my next ice cream coming from? Is that it? Does anybody here like reading books at home? Oh, brilliant. Does anybody like getting stories read to them at home? Because even if you can read, isn't it lovely to lie back and listen to somebody else reading? And it's so, so, so good for you. It really, really, really helps you in school too. So you promised me you'd always finish your day with brushing your teeth and having a story. Will you do that? Thank you very, very much. You're very good. Now enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.